high-speed internet by satellite, regardless of where you are. That's the idea of Elon Musk's Starlink, and Elon will not rest until you can tweet from every forest, desert, and collapsing glacier. But ever since Musk has begun shooting satellites into orbit, scientists have raised alarms mm. about all that could go wrong. Just recently, the news screamed that Starlink would damage the ozone layer and that four of Musk's satellites fall out of orbit each day. Really, let's have a look. As of early 2025, more than 7,000 Starlink satellites are in low Earth orbit. That's about three quarters of everything up there. SpaceX already has permission for 12,000 more, and they've applied for a total of more than 40,000. They aren't the only ones who want to put satellites into these low orbits. Several other companies, including Amazon and the Chinese company SpaceSail, are working on their own global internet system. At that pace, we could end up with a hundred thousand or so satellites by the end of the decade. According to the Harvard astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell, it's true that about four to five of the starting satellites fall out of orbit each day, but it's not because something goes wrong. It's that Starlink is retiring older satellites by burning them up in the upper atmosphere. So it's not like the junk falls down to Earth. However, burning the satellites up doesn't make the material they're made of disappear. That distributes very thinly in the upper atmosphere, and that has scientists worried. Satellites aren't the only thing that's burning up in our atmosphere, of course. Meteorites have been raining down on us for billions of years, and their leftover dust is also circling around our planet now. But the chemical composition of the satellites is considerably different than that of meteorites, and that's why scientists worry. In particular, the satellites contain a lot of aluminium, which meteorites don't. A study from the University of Southern California found that each re-entering satellite releases a whopping 30 kilograms of aluminium oxide as nanoparticles into the upper atmosphere. With the plant extension, these accumulate at a rate of over 360 metric tons per year. The aluminium oxide catalyzes a chemical reaction that releases chlorine, and that chlorine can then destroy ozone. The scientists say that the impact is poorly understood, but could be significant. Last year, another scientist raised a different concern. The accumulation of conductive metal dust in the upper atmosphere could affect the magnetosphere and with that the planet's magnetic field. Alas, more than a year has passed since the preprint appeared and the paper hasn't been published in a journal, so that doesn't seem to be a terribly reliable estimate. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. Astronomers haven't been pleased with the Starlink fleet either because they fly so low they reflect a lot of sunlight. In twilight hours they leave big streaks across long exposure images. Musk himself said that he takes the pain of astronomers seriously. We'll make sure Starlink has no material effect on discoveries in astronomy. We care a great deal about science. And indeed, the second generation satellites are much dimmer than the first, only about a fifth as bright as the original ones thanks to better coating and panel orientation. And yet the dimmer satellites have created new problems. It turns out that the Starlink satellites aren't just shiny but also emit radio waves in the spectral range of 100 to 200 megahertz, right in the band used by radio telescopes. And the bummer is that for the second generation of Starlink satellites, the radio emissions are up to 32 times stronger than those from earlier models. The likely cause? Poor shielding of electronic components. So they're harder to see but easier to hear, like stealth bagpipes.
But Musk is living up to his promise that he cares about astronomers. Since last year, Starlink is testing a system to avoid interfering with radio telescopes. The telescopes share their observation schedule and SpaceX then makes sure to direct radio transmission signals so that they don't hit the telescope. This is currently only an operation for a handful of telescopes, such as the very large array in New Mexico, but a study that appeared a few months ago found that the system can reduce the strength of the radio interference by more than two orders of magnitude. So basically, scientists have no particular reason for concern, they're just preventively concerned. On the worry meter, I give it a 1 out of 10. Don't lose sleep over it. Hello? Hi, Elon. You're launching your own radio telescopes? Eight dollars per observation. Brilliant. And how about every third image is Mars? Go for it, I say. Bye. Problems. I'm sure you have a few. But problem solving is a skill that you can train, just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.